Win on Sunday, sell on a Monday. That's the mantra of any car manufacturer that wants to go racing. In America, that probably means you win at NASCAR and then you can sell another Camaro. But in Europe, particularly in the 60s and 70s, that meant rallying. If you wanted to get a bit of pedigree, a few more sales, it was gonna be done in a muddy forest. Renault decided to get a bit more showroom appeal for their humble eight saloon by taking it racing in the form of the Gordini. And we've got a gorgeous example here to take for a drive today to find out why this road going rally car is such a coveted legend. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. Renault wanted their humble eight saloon to have a bit more joie de vivre. And to do that, they decided to take it rallying. They gave the standard Renault 8 to former racing driver and race engineer Amade Gordini and told him, make it go fast. He did that by taking the standard 1100cc engine that you got in the road going 8, added a crossflow head and twin Webers, going from 50 horsepower up to 90. An enormous jump over stock power, around 80%. Where he then added twin rear shocks to cope with the aggressive surfaces that you can come across on the world's rally stages and uprated suspension. That small board of changes made the 8 into a bit of a rambunctious little tear away. And Renault liked what Gordini had done. So much so that they named the car in his honor, the Renault 8 Gordini, and they entered six of them into the 1964 Tour de Course Rally. Of the top five finishes in that year's Tour de Course, four of them were Renault 8 Gordinis, including the car that won it. In fact, the Renault 8 Gordini won three Tour de Courses on the trot. Buoyed by that initial rallying success, Renault launched an all-new 8 Gordini for the 1966 rallying season, what was effectively a race car with an R8 body dropped on top of it. The standard 1100cc engine was bored out to 1.25 litres and power jumped from 90 to, in race trim, 110. Now, of course, if you're building a race car and you want to base it on a road car, you have to homologate it. You have to sell a number of cars to customers. So, yep, the updated 66 Gordini made its way into showrooms as well. You've still got over 100 horsepower in the road going Gordini, you've still got the five-speed gearbox, and you've got a new revised front end. On the rally cars, of course, you've got those iconic Sibby spotlights on it, but you didn't need those on a road car, so the front of the R8 Gordini road car was redesigned to have four headlights on it for that rallying look. This really was a rally car for the road. So what's it like to drive then? Well, I've got the owner John in the passenger seat with me and it's his pride and joy and it's worth a fair bit of cash, so I'm not going to be absolutely wellying it. But here's what I will tell you. It flies. The torque of this thing is incredible. You'd imagine it would be peaky power right at the top, but it just isn't. We're in fourth gear now. Nail it. And it's just ready to go. It's lively and it's eager and it's excitable. Exactly what I like in a car. And as for the way it handles, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Engine over the rear wheels, obviously, which means unless you're being really stupid with it, it gives you that bit of extra balance. And the steering, oh, it's just beautiful. Nice and weighty, nice and direct, perfect size steering wheel that just mimics those motor liters that we all love in MGBs and so on. She rides a little bit firm because it's on ever so slightly cut down springs to drop it a bit, which is quite a common mod for these cars. But you know what? In that French way, it handles well and yet it's not firm. It's not shaking my teeth out. You wouldn't mistake it for being German. Four wheel disc brakes on these cars, servo assisted. This thing stops really, really well. The other thing to know about the R8 is that it's rear engined and that means you've got quite a long gear linkage from the lever just here to the engine right at the back. Now I'm sure when it was brand new and every linkage and cable and bushing in the system was tight and fresh, it might have been a decent gear change, but unfortunately that is the weak link in the Renault 8. It's, well, John described it as like stirring cold porridge and frankly, I can't disagree with him. It, it, it is a bit vague. We've hit fifth instead of third multiple times. I think that's first. Yeah, it was. I'm getting to master it now. But what I would say is, if you're one of 12 very lucky people who owns a Renault 8 Gordini in the UK and you've just bought it, take it easy until you're used to this gear change because it's not one for the uninitiated. So let's slow down for a minute and have a chat to John and see what it's like to own a road-going rally car like the R8 Gordini. I've had Renault 8s in the past, uh, one I used to s quite successfully sprint and hill climb. 
Sadly, I had to sell that a few years ago, but I had acquired another one, which was a rusty shell that I was going to restore. This came up for sale through a mutual friend. Somebody had contacted him to say he brought this car over from South Africa a couple of years before. Gave it a thorough check over to make sure it was what it was pertaining to be. Because the 8 Gordini has uh, sort of unique features. It has extra plating, strengthening plating and all that sort of thing. And as they don't come up for sale very often, committed myself to buying it. Turned out that the internals of the original engine weren't what, what they were meant to be. I had to go about sourcing an 8 Gordini engine. Again, through a mutual friend, this guy had bought a Dinalpine from America. He'd got this 8 Gordini engine in that and then upgraded it to a more modern Renault 5 Gordini engine. This engine was just sitting in his garage. So it's got a slightly upgraded piston and liner kit. Standard 8G is 1255cc. This is now 1296cc. Being a South African car, it had about 10 to 12 layers of paint on it. While it was in the body shop and the guy was starting to strip the paint off, we decided, because I was lucky to find the wheels, that we'd put slightly wider wheel arches on. In fact, they're complete wings and they just unbolt. Put a new front panel on, which I sourced from France. The handling is unbelievable. They're a very, very neutral handling car. You can encourage oversteer and they're just, they're great fun to drive and they're a bit different. You look at the list price for the R8 Gordini and the later cars like this, when they were new, were around 1,100 pounds with all the taxis involved. But then compare it to one of its closest rivals, the Lancia Fulvia, and that was over half as much again. So in short, this was a rally dominating, hugely fun little road car that looked the business, did the business, and actually was a bit of a bargain. Now unfortunately it's a 60s car and it's French and that means they rot and that means there are none of these left. John reckons there's about a dozen in the UK in total and this particular car isn't even a UK one it's coming from South Africa so your chances of finding one are pretty slim and if you do you're gonna need a few quid probably over 30 grand to get yourself a nice R8 Gordini but if you do <laughs> There's not many cars that will put such a smile on your face, actually not even going that quickly. In an age where Renault continue to make dull, uninspiring SUVs like the Capture and the Cadjar and Lord only knows what else they're making these days, it's easy to forget that once upon a time, that diamond stood for something. It meant racy, it meant exciting, it meant stylish, it meant built for enthusiasts. Which means it leaves it to the classics, cars like the Alpines, the awesome 5 GT Turbo, and of course the 8 Gordini here. This one doesn't really get a look in because of course there are so few around these days that not many people remember it. But when you know about it... You realise how good it really is. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Thanks to John for letting me drive his incredible Gordini today. Forget your 5 GT turbos, forget even your Alpines. This is the special little Renault that should be on your bucket list. There's only 12, but what a magical dozen they are. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.